Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, handling exercise. This is what I do regularly to keep my basic uh, flying handling skill alive. Uh, we are in a random airport, uh, departing on a reciprocal runway of the ILS I will intend to fly. Here we are on board now. I'm going to do a voiceover uh, because I want them to uh, record the same video uh, in another language, not to have to do it again. So we are now choosing the ILS chart for runway 19 er for departing runway uh, 01. So this is the frequency in your mic back uniform 111 seven. As you can see, they are active. The VOR, it's a backlay Bravo Kilo Whiskey 117.7 is active there. Uh, that's the HSI with the bottom left is the ILS, bottom right is the VOR with the bearing pointer. QNH3003, altitude 6000. We're going to climb to 6000. And um, the heading selector goes to 330 because after departure, that's what I want to fly to to gain some lateral distance from the localizer oxygen is activated battery and generators uh, pneumatic is on uh, tests are done hydraulic pumps are on uh, the windshield heating is on and the gear is down next we have flaps to one which is take off position that's flaps one for takeoff all the parameters are in green. Fuel is 900 kilos, which is sufficient for this exercise. Pitch is in the green band. Uh, that's the map, Kilo Bravo, Kilo Whiskey Airport. We're not gonna use the map for this flight, obviously. This uh, is exercise is to train our handling skills and IFR skills. Uh, the engine will go in toga for takeoff and climb at 1,000 feet, which is 3,500, so 1,000 feet above the airdrome elevation that you can see there, 2,500. And the parking brake is released to do the test. Okay. That's uh, takeoff. Uh, it's okay. Set the parking brake again, but we're ready to go. Actually, we're going to release it because we are good to go. So there goes uh, toga. That's Toga right there. You can uh, see we're not using Fly Director. That's part of the exercise. Take off trust is set. Airspeed is alive now. That's 80 knots. V1 rotate. Pitch 10 degrees initially. Positive rate here up here in transit with the yellow lights. From this point on, we're going to focus on the primary flight display alone. Pitch for to kill the speed trend vector, usually it's 15 degrees. Thousand feet now, we're gonna turn left and go climb trust. Gonna aim for heading 330, accelerate and passing 150 knots. Uh, we're gonna retract the flaps. That's 155 now. Flaps should go up any moment, and that's flap in transit now, and flaps are low. Perfect. We will then accelerate to eventually 200 knots, that's our target speed, and we want a heading of 330, we're now 7 degrees off now, 1000 to level off, the parameters within which we want to be are 10 degrees of heading, 100 feet of altitude, 10 knots of speed, and one dot, both in lock and glide. I'm now mitigating the rate of climb to 1000 feet a minute, when we are within a thousand feet from capturing the altitude 180 knots that's fine for climb i will accelerate later on as we level off at 6000 feet we keep on flying on heading 330 for a while just to build lateral distance from the localizer 
Now we level off, we let the speed, speed build up. And we should then... Okay, we can, can check now as an after takeoff checklist fluffs up, you're up. Everything is green. Close to 200 knots now. So we have altitude is okay, speed is okay, and heading is okay. We are now 8 miles from the VOR. Very good parameters, 6,000 feet, 200 knots, 330 degrees. All is in green. It's about time. Oh, sorry, that was a mistake in handling my switches. Back on the primary display. Okay, now we go on heading. 013, which is the reciprocal of our QFU, which is the runway course 193. We keep the speed until we turn on base, uh, and turning on base will uh, slow down to 180 knots, which is the maximum speed for flaps. That's 30 miles from the VOR of Bravo Kilo Whiskey. We are aiming at, say, 17 miles to give us some room to maneuver. But basically, as soon as the localizer will become alive, we have a positive ID of our nav aid, which is the localizer itself, then we can turn inbound. In the meantime, we want to keep as precisely as possible our parameters of 200 knots, 6,000 feet, and 013 degrees, which we have now perfectly. Fifteen miles from the VOR. That's the localizer live. India Mike Quebec uniform is identified on the bottom left part of the HSI, as you can see. We are at 16 miles, perfect. By the time we make this 90 degree turn to get on base, we will we'll probably be 17, which is fine. I'm now going to turn, trying to keep my speed and altitude as precisely as possible and I should be selecting a heading of roughly 120 to intercept I'm at the same time I'm slowing down to 180 knots to get ready to extend the flap to position 1 speed is good Altitude, it's okay. Within a hundred feet, I would consider the performance being very good. Within two hundred feet is acceptable, and uh, and outside two hundred feet, up to three hundred feet is unacceptable. Same goes for speed and heading. I also consider three. Um, possible variation, very good, marginal and unacceptable. In the heading that will be 10, 20 and 30 degrees, in the speed will be 10, 20 and 30 knots. These are just my parameters. They're nothing official. So you see the bearing pointer there is closing in, so soon I will be turning right to reduce the intercept angle, which is now pretty wide, and maybe excessive. I think 30 degrees is a very good intercept angle when you are closing up the localizer. I'm now turning in to go to a 30, 35 degrees intercept angle. At that point, we'll, I will then have to keep my focus on to the localizer to spot the moment, the exact moment when it becomes active. 
I'm reducing now the speed. I just like to highlight that there is no auto throttle on this aircraft, so everything is manual. No flight director, obviously no autopilot, no throttle. The glide slope is now alive. This is my 30 degrees intercept angle. It doesn't have to be precise, it's more or less. In fact, it looks just a bit more than that. Flaps has gone to one and there's a quite a bit of ballooning effect which I'm trying now to counteract without exceeding the limit of altitude that I imposed myself. I don't mind letting the speed to decrease even further. That's actually my aim. The selector effect is now going down. We have one dot. Glide slope is one dot above, so one, one, one dot below. And we are now turning to intercept the localizer at the same time. We're almost on the glide. We are on the lock. With this aircraft, the rate of descent should be around 500 feet a minute, 450 feet a minute to stay on the on the glide. I can see now we have 600 feet a minute slightly excessive right the wind is from the left and with this heading we should be getting back to the localizer up until one dot deviation I consider it not even to be uh, an error at all it's absolutely fine but we're now like the gear goes down uh, we see the three transit light and now three green light we are perfectly on the localizer now speed keep decreasing we should soon have flaps 2, still have flap 1 now, we're on the glide and on the lock, perfect. Flaps in transit and flap is 2 now, 120 knots and decreasing, speed selector goes to the ref plus something, the way I judge my approach speed is with the pitch angle, I want it to be 0 or slightly positive, so I like to let the aircraft decelerate until, to stay on the glide, I have an attitude of zero or slightly positive. Now we have two and a half degrees of attitude. And we're pretty much at the approach speed, so this is very good. Lock is perfect, so flaps are now full. Speed is okay, certainly within limits. And the next thing to do is just to correct glide. My technique is if I'm far away enough, I like to recapture whatever lock or glide is slowly. I don't want to make any abrupt change in pitch or roll or my heading to recover a lock or a glide like to do it smoothly and give it time if I have time I notice now that I did not set the minimum which is not too much of a big deal I could even go without it that's absolutely not a, not a big deal this is not what this sort of exercise is all about but you will see later I'll try to set it anyway it takes some skill to trim the aircraft perfectly well so that you can distract yourself for a few seconds to do something to rectify something yeah that's the point where I realize I don't have the minima so I'm gonna look for the field I need to activate the minima first look at the minimum how much is it is 1700 so let's go there Okay, let's try to stabilize the aircraft as much as possible so that I can distract myself for a few seconds. Right, so let's activate the field. Minimum now it's now off. Make it on. Click there, 2700. That's okay. And we haven't lost our parameters too much. That's a perfect opportunity to exercise the skill of recovering some parameters that have gone off a little bit but still within limits and has to be done smoothly so that 
that's it. Uh, I don't mind a situation like this at all. In fact, I find that I find that to be a good challenge. I don't mind it at all. Normally, in real life, I wouldn't do something like this. Uh, but the simulator is a perfect opportunity. What what if something happened that uh, pushed me away from parameters, like a gust of wind or whatever, or someone kicked the flight controls, whatever? Uh, the ability to recover it's important. Hello, uh, so I don't know what I'm looking at right now, but uh, I'm main focusing back on the primary flight display. The glide is perfect. The speed is perfect. The localizer is good. And uh, uh, maybe just look, checking the switches. Okay, let's now focus because it's coming close to the runway. Radio altimeter is 1,400 feet. You can see just the uh, two o'clock of the HSI. At 1,000 feet, we want to be stable. So within one dot, on speed, gear down, flaps full. That's 1,000 feet now. We are within parameter. We are stable, perfectly stable. From now on, it gets more difficult. I will be looking at 100 feet below minimum, above before minima. So at 2,800. So at th that is the point. Now the glide is one dot below. And I remember I didn't know why that happened. All of a sudden, my BSI went to zero for no, no good reason because my Attitude didn't change, my power didn't change. Anyway, whatever. Good opportunity to recover it the right way, considering how sensitive the needles are at this uh, distance from the runway. Good glide, good lock, good speed. That's 100 feet below before the minima. Right there, look up. And now, the transition to uh, visual, we still have to fly pretty much glide and the walk. Of course, the Vasi or the Papi takes precedence. Now probably 200 feet, 150, flare, engine idle, bit left of the center line. The wind is from the left, so it's not a big deal. I'd rather be upwind than downwind. And the touchdown. Regain the center line smoothly. And the next thing is to keep the center line, decelerate, so to be at taxi speed when I'm being a uh, taxiway. An exit. First exit going by and here comes our ideal exit slowing down the taxi speed and vacating so the exercise is over I do this frequently with different airplanes a different airport and the aim and purpose is to keep my flying skill alive. That is instrument scanning technique, hand flying, energy management, and sneak and rudder skills. So that's it uh, folks for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, flight with me. I advise everybody to use the flight simulator to actually learn or maintain some real flying skills and not just to push buttons as most people do, which is maybe nice to see but absolutely pointless from a uh, power perspective okay so again that's all thank you for flying with me and put a like if you like the video and i'll see you on the next one bye bye